So, hi everyone, um, my name is Kieran Manship and I'm a master's student at the University of Glasgow. Um, I'm on the Conflict and Battlefield Archaeology um, course. So today I'll give you a wee talk on some dissertation research that I've been getting on with, um, sort of opened up to me by the good people at HARP, um, big thanks to Ian, um, who have been carrying out a survey project of sections of um, General Wade's Military Road. So, I'll give you a bit of background first. Um, Wade is an Anglo-Irishman um, who's been a soldier since he was about 17. Um, he serves on the continent um, and then he comes back and in, around about the time of the 1715 rising, he's actually down south in England rounding up Jacobite sympathisers and seizing arms, um, sending folk to prison essentially. He becomes the MP for Bath. In 1724 he comes up to Scotland um, to carry out a report on the readiness and the ability of the government forces to combat another Jacobite rising. Um, among these, among his recommendations is the construction of roads. During the previous decade, there was two unsuccessful Jacobite risings in 1715 and 1719, both of which, in the event of both of them, the Jacobites were able to kind of evaporate into the hillsides using their intimate knowledge of the landscape and the shadowy hills and glens to completely evade capture. Um, so Wade sees roads and the strengthening of garrisons as a way to combat this. He also recommends the formation of Highland Watches, which go on to become the Black Watch. These are about seven watches or regiments of local Gaelic-speaking Highlanders um, who will act as kind of um, a police force, essentially, um, for the Highlands in the event of another Jacobite rising. He also revives a Cromwellian idea for the the construction of a Highland galley to patrol Loch Ness and ferry trips around. So, to get back to Rhodes, he is made the Commander-in-Chief of British forces in Northern Britain in 1725, and in that year and the following year, road construction starts. He is made a Field Marshal in 1740 and heads back to the continent um, to fight in European wars, um, and his predecessor is um, a man called Caulfield, who becomes the new most man essentially. So he's in there until 1776, after which road construction stops, but um, maintenance does. So here's a pretty crappy map of um, some of the of, of the road networks. The main ones we'll focus on are the Great Glen Road, which is the first one he finishes. Um, Fort William all the way up to Lane's Fort George in Inverness, which falls up to there. And part of the thing is to do the park, the survey, um, Sun's Hill. And the next military road, particularly the Sun Hill to Dallas Harbour stretch, and part of the Dallas Street to Dallas Harbour stretch here. So here's some interesting maps. This is one of Wade's sketches. We don't have an exact date for it, but it's between 1725 and 1728. The yellow is um, the Street to Dallas Harbour stretch, and the kind of pink the colour grey one is um, Sun Hills to Inverness. And he get the this is the first time Wade puts pen, pencils to paper and plans out how he's going to manage the landscape, how he's going to enforce the will of the British government onto this um, fairly lawless landscape. Um, and here on the right, you can see that it's pretty much the finished article with Roy's comprehensive um, survey here. That is the intersection there, which is over there. Um, Roy's map, you get the terrain, you get local settlements, you can see the road actually dissects this settlement here, um, and I'll talk about that briefly with archaeology in a bit, um, and you get land use, so it's a kind of, quite a comprehensive military survey of the area. Here is um, Clement Olympia's military map of 1731, and I'll kind of jump up to the great line here, so you've got Fort William um, and Fort Augustus. Um, and here you see the road in action, really, connecting Fort William, which was um, kind of revamped um, in the 1720s, and Fort Augustus, which was kind of built in the 1720s, name changed later. Um, but what's really interesting with Lempier's map is you've got McDonald and Keppick, 200 men here. Um, and this is sort of, I don't know, an 18th century kind of military GIS system where he's combining um, the landscape, the terrain, military infrastructure with information on what happened in 1715. 
So you've got, you've gone, you're in the red, you've got hostile, I Jacobite leaning clans, and then on the, the pure right, um, on the left you've got um, the clans loyal to the government. Um, so this, in the, that's just one brief section of Glen Pierce map, but that's a, carries that through, um, throughout. Um, so putting the roads in, in, a, in a context of what it was designed to do. Um, here we go. This is the road in action in the 1745 Rising. And ironically, it was the Jacobite army under Bonnie Finch Charlie that made the best use of the roads. Um, landing in Glenfin and he was able to rally some clans and then shoot off down to Edinburgh, completely outmaneuvering and outmarching um, the government forces. The Jacobites are kind of a lot of pockets rectangular here. We don't have any dates for when they moved, although they're re re represented in the history. Um, Boy Prince Charlie stays at um, Clear Apple in mid to late August and then goes to capture Perth and then off to Edinburgh where he goes to store. This is the government army coming down the road and what's quite interesting is they take a different route. Um, Boy Prince Charlie's army heads down the, the road towards Dunkeld and on to Perth, whereas the government army heads down um, towards Creef, Stirling, then Edinburgh, where they're eventually defeated at the Battle of Preston Pan. But what's interesting, Rutherford here gets the date for the Battle of Tilly Cranky Rock as a year, and um, Glen Pierre also does that, which is quite, quite bizarre. Um, really. Maybe it's got to be a on an island, I don't know. That's... So, now for a wee bit of the archaeology. Now, this is just more of a brief introduction to the archaeology, really. But I want to kind of show you some some of the key points, really. Here we've got line of the road. This is on a section of the Creeps to Dallas Cardiff Road. Um, and you've got a modern B road and a big culvert and drainage ditch that's right across Ways Road. This is quite fairly symptomatic of what the road, what the unprotected bits of Ways Road are like. If they're not covered by a modern road, certainly interfered with a lot, and that's because Wade picked best routes. They used the contours of the landscape um, and fairly um, well, kind of basic but effective engineering techniques to build the road. It's fairly like a, a Roman military road. Um, and I'll move this one on to the testimony of plumes. And here you can see it's got a palm set of the landscape where You've got the old military road, and as it kind of drifts in and out of view, the enclosure walls start springing up around the settlement. Those of the band wasn't too long ago, and spring up and interact with this road. And what's really interesting from the records is that we know men from these um, sort of settlements in this landscape went off um, to fight as part of the Athol Brigade um, at uh, the Battle of Culloden, and they get pretty much decimated. They're on the Jacobite right. They hit into the government left, where they met with mass musket fire, a canister shot, and fixed bayonet. And then as the battle goes on, they, they get essentially wiped out. Um, so what will be really interesting to see how, what's the physicality of this landscape, where the roads interacting with these settlements that we know men may have been forced to go and fight, but we certainly know what the, how some of the, men, the sons of Athol thought about this. Um, here we go, that's a wee nice wee paved drain. Um, other archaeological work has looked at the architecture of the road, and um, as we found as well, it seems to be, it's not necessarily uniform, it doesn't follow what we wanted. It's, some of it's not 17 feet wide with a drain stitch and a bank and all that kind of thing. There's a bit of leeway given by the captains, at least, um, who are in charge of this. Um, and what's really good to look at through the survey is that you, get, you build up a picture of the experience of the soldier as you walk the road. Where are the, where are the drains? Where are the quarries? How are they progressing through the landscape, making this drastic change of the road? I'll finish with a wee bit about tourism, and just to kind of bring this to the present. 18th century tourists such as Thomas Pennant, and there's Johnson and Boswell having a jolly time, and they are quite key in disseminating information about the Highlands. What was this landscape? like after the road was built. Pennant talks about the area around Loch Tay becoming a kind of hive of industry in the last 30 years as the road was built. Um, in recent times, you've got this um, 
tell the group about walking the islands, walking Wade's Village Road as a kind of historical experience and interacting with the landscape that way. And then the West, West Island Way goes a lot to um, Shining Wade's Road as well. So, three finishing points. Um, I want to, I hope I've showed through, through the cartography especially, the military implications of the road and how it acted as a military network. What will become more apparent over time is the conflict without guns, conflict away from the battlefield. What did the road mean for local settlement patterns? What, um, how did they react to it? Um, and how can we see that in archaeological record, where it might not necessarily be covered particularly well um, through some of the maps, um, especially the 18th century, through the clearance period? What, how does the road sort of um, play a role in that? And we know from the Scots magazine, who writing about 100 years after the start of the Dunkeld and Inverness military road construction, they write in 1828 that the road is the foundation of civilization in this part of the world, and that um, the main factor of change that brought people from the Highlands is from reachless banditti to civilized people is General Wade's military road. So it clearly has a big impact outside military um, thinking and outside military applications. So, thank you.